Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton, and I'm bringing you another 24-7 report, bringing you up to speed with all the latest Everton transfer news. Today's top story sees a divisive figure at the club, looking like he could be edging towards the exit door. That's because reports in France say OGC Nice have held advanced talks to try and buy Morgan Schneiderlin for a rumoured fee of around €8 million. Euros. The article came from Nice local paper, Nice Matin, but those reports were then refuted by the Echo this morning. Phil Bad News Kirkbride struck again, saying that talks with Nice haven't actually made it that far. But no doubt this kind of move could well be a go. And Nice are one of the richer clubs in France. Probably one of the few could realistically give Schneiderlin what, he, what he's probably looking for money-wise. And of course give him the opportunity to return to his home country. Which is something he's apparently keen on. Trust me, if Schneidlin is finally keen on leaving Everton after three and a half years, that can only be a good thing for the club's sake, especially as far as FFP is concerned and where we go from there moving forward. Now it's time for the return of the regular transfer links on this show. According to 90 Minutes, Everton still remain interested in Crystal Palace's star winger, Wilfred Zaha. Don't see it as a priority, apparently, which is just as well because we couldn't afford them last year, so what chance have we got this time around? Nonetheless, Zaha could be set to move anyway, but to PSG instead, which is far more likely in my eyes. Zaha is a very good player, but even if we did get him on the off chance, it would probably be terrible business given the price Palace would be looking for and how that will probably affect us spending on other players going forward. I think it's a not something that's very realistic for us at present. Something that might be a bit more realistic might be loan deals in the coming window. And moving on with that, it's an Ancelotti regular next. And it's James Rodriguez, who has been linked for the umpteenth time. This time it's the publication Sport in Spain, who have drummed it up. They say Atletico Madrid are interested as well. But Real Madrid are not keen on letting him go there on loan for obvious reasons. According to them, Ancelotti wants to add more quality to his squad for next year, albeit it does look now more likely to be a loan, which I would actually be more keen on getting behind than a permanent move, particularly given that he's already about 28, 29, I think, and he's got no Premier League experience as of yet. So he could well be a flop for all we know, but he's a very gifted player. And if we bring him in on loan and see how he adjusts to the league, it could be an interesting move. It could well be a stroke of genius if it does work out. So... It's a bit of a win-win situation if we are able to get him on a loan deal. James Rodriguez, he's a very good player. I think we'll all agree on that. Staying with Sport and the Spanish Giants, they also say Everton remain the favourites to sign Jean-Claire Tadebo from Barcelona. He's, of course, on loan at Schalke at present. Apparently, Everton are trying to haggle the fee down from around €25 million Euros to €20 million. Whichever price it is, I don't think that's worth it for Tadebo. I don't think he looks like somebody who could strengthen our back line immediately. And given that we won't have as much money as we'd like to spend this summer, right now I don't think he's worth that kind of investment. One more rumour from Spain. El Gol Digital reports that Everton have joined Arsenal in the race for Espanyol midfield playmaker Mark Rocker. At 23, he's a very talented player. Currently playing his trade in an underachieving side who sit bottom of La Liga. However, they still won't allow Rocker to leave apparently for anything less than his €40 million Euro release clause, which I definitely can't see us paying at the moment. But if Espanyol are relegated, which is very likely given the six points off the safety line at the moment in La Liga, their hand might be a bit easier to force if they drop into the second tier. And even then, it might be not enough of a barter to make us afford them if you know what I mean I wouldn't put your money on that one now for some updates on current members of the squad L'Equipe in France say that they are say that Everton are considering asking Monaco to extend Jibril Sadibe's loan for another year as they're not prepared to trigger the buyout clause in his current loan for me I'm not still completely convinced on Sadibe either way I'd actually rather give John Joe Kenny a go next year as the second choice right back. But on loan, he still may prove useful to D before another year. So maybe it is worth pursuing. But 
Definitely, I don't think we'll be parting with the 14 million release clause, which I think it is, in his contract. I don't think we'll be paying that this summer. Alternatively, Sadibi could move to Spain instead if French journalist Mohamed Bouhafsi is to be believed. He says that Sevilla have shown interest in bringing Sadibi in and have spoken to his agents. So, Sadibi's future, whatever way you look at it, looks very much up in the air right now. Finally today, Fabian Delft joined Theo Walcott, Gabamin and Yeri Mina on the training injury list and Andre Gomez is rumoured to be on that as well, although he might be in with a shot. He, Delph is now doubtful, of course, to play in the in the derby and not that he wouldn't be able to have an impact anyway. He was atrocious the last time he played in one. But yeah, the, we've got a lengthy injury list and hopefully maybe Delph and Gomez might be back in time, but other than that, it may well be a very threadbare squad that we take into that game. Oh, and Martin Stecklenberg has also been offered a short-term extension to see him through to the end of this season. Woohoo! Honestly, I just want this derby out of the way. I can't be bothered with another week of injuries and bad news, as it always seems to be in the build-up to a derby. Just get this over and done with. Apologies, I know we should be looking forward to the football coming back, but it's just difficult to stay positive when we're having no luck as it is before a ball's even been kicked. Ah, well, hopefully next week will bring us some better news. And no, no doubt I'll be back to bring you that news as well, so be sure to subscribe for more Everton news, more Everton content. Let us know your opinions on everything that we've covered today. Drop a comment below. Give the video a like as well. But that's all, guys, until next time. So thank you guys for watching on the Toffee Blues.